All right, so as I said, the topic for today is open source tools for REST API documentation, which is a mouthful, but I'm gonna explain what all that means. I'm assuming that um, if, you, if you join this meetup, you are either doing some uh, API documentation to some degree, or you're interested in, in learning a bit more on how it works. So I also have like a, a quick demo of all the tools that uh, I'm gonna talk about. So without further ado, let's go with, with an introduction. So when we say APIs, what do we mean, right? APIs can be a number of things. Um, you can have C++ APIs, um, you can have Java APIs, and then you have web APIs. Web APIs are um, uh, programmer interfaces. So it's for machine to machine, typically communication uh, through the web for web applications. And within that space, uh, we, there are several architectural standards out there. Um, some of them are not even um, standards uh, as defined by RFCs. Um, the most famous is REST. REST is uh, an architectural style for applications. Um, I'm not gonna delve into what REST is. This, that is out of the scope of this meetup. Um, but let's just say that REST is the, mo uh, the most popular architectural style for web APIs right now. And you can describe it and design it using a, a number of um, specification standards. The most famous of these is OpenAPI. And so the combination of REST and OpenAPI is the one that we're gonna feature in terms of tooling uh, in today's meetup. Then there's also other architectures, other styles for web APIs such as GraphQL, uh, Async API, which is gaining lots of traction and it may well be uh, the topic of a further meeting. Uh, we have, uh, I think, the, the main dev role for Async API is also a member of the Write Docs community, so that's also very interesting. Then there's the old styles such as SOAP, XML, RPC, etc. But in this particular case, we are focusing on uh, API documentation for REST APIs, which are described using OpenAPI. So when we say REST API docs, what are we looking for? in REST API docs. So first of all, we want accurate reference documentation on things like requests, responses, the parameters, uh, the schemas that make up the data models of the API and much more. That is like the basis and is what developers typically look for at first to um, use the API. The second thing is interactive documentation um, with, with let's say lots of examples. Um, that's usually harder to produce, um, but it's, uh, there are research papers on this even that show that developers really look for these um, hands-on examples, uh, JSON payloads, so that they can get a feeling of how the API uh, behaves and, and responds to requests. And the third thing that we are looking for in REST API docs is guides. So it's like a different content type it goes deeper into the API flows. Um, it can explain like the API essentials, such as how do you authenticate, um, how do you perform the first call, and so on. So those are the three types of the three things really that we are looking for uh, in REST API docs. Usually, um, it's, it's like a summary maybe of the eighty percent of the things we are looking for, and this, the documentation solutions we're going to review. Um, deal with all the three things in, in different degrees, right? Um, perhaps the hardest is the guides. Uh, it's very difficult to find currently solutions uh, that allow you to, um, to embed, say, guides within Markdown within the rest of the documentation, um, especially when we're talking about open source solutions. But there are solutions out there, uh, commercial ones built from the open source solutions that allow you to, to build developer portals. And we're also going to uh, briefly discuss, um, discuss them. So what is the role of OpenAPI in all this? Um, OpenAPI essentially is a specification standard declarative language that you can use to describe a REST API. Um, it's currently at version 3.1.0, uh, which is already gaining some, some, some traction. Uh, some of the tools we are gonna review are compatible already with OpenAPI 3.0. Um, 
though by far the, the more um, the most popular is just 303, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, what you can do with that is 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 a JSON or YAML file, which allow you to um, not just describe the the REST API, but also um, feed the entire life cycle of API development. So if you have this file and you start say with the design of it, uh, then you can very uh, easily create mock servers to test the API. You can generate server and client code. Uh, that's in, especially interesting for say customers of your API. And the most interesting thing of course, is that you can generate documentation uh, um, together with code samples. Um, the Open API standards um, lets you add your own examples for things like requests and responses, for example. And, and with, those, with those sample uh, payloads, you can generate uh, even interactive documentation. The benefits of using something like Open API uh, and, and using these tools that automate REST API documentation is that, first of all, you, you, you achieve greater accuracy. And this for reference documentation is, is paramount, it's, it's so important. Um, if you were to write to document manually a REST API, you would have to update the documentation manually every time there's a change, say, in a schema or a parameter name. And, and you would have to constantly go back and forth between the API and the documentation. With OpenAPI, you don't have to do that because you simply parse the OpenAPI file and you generate the documentation from it. Um, this also allows faster deployment because you, you don't have to code anything in say HTML or you know, CSS, JS. You can even create a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines to simply deploy the docs wherever you want. And um, so, it's, it's so it's just so convenient, uh, especially when your company is doing API first. API first mean starting API design from the specifications and from the docs so that you have a single source of truth. The assumptions for this presentation, well, first of all, is that the first assumption is that your team or your the developers you work with are able to produce a valid open API three dot whatever file for the rest APIs. That is the first assumption. So, we are assuming that you have open API files uh, available or that your team can produce them. The second assumption is that you can edit, um, as a technical writer, that you can edit the documentation fields of those open API files. And by documentation fields, I refer to examples, descriptions, and summaries, essentially. And the third is that you have some basic knowledge of web development so that you can, um, tweak or customize the look and feel of the documentation uh, as, as, as it's been output by, uh, by these tools. The question lingers here is why open source, right? So why are we talking about open source tool and we're not talking about commercial tool? Well, the, the first thing, I, I put it as, a, as the last point here, but the first thing really is that they're free and uh, uh, you know, it's easier to introduce a free tool, uh, especially when a company is not used to documentation or maybe you are a small startup, you work at a startup where uh, the budget is for tooling is limited or you just want to you know, build a proof of concept. That, that's easier with open source free tools. But the, there are additional advantages. And one that I like very much is that open source tool give you full control over the output and, and the deployment of the documentation because you see the code. You can even fork um, like create an alternative copy in, in Git parlance. Uh, you can fork any of these solutions, customize the look and feel, and then simply release the documentation however you want. And in many cases, these tools are also the core of commercial tools that are out there. So you get most of the features already. Not all of them, but you get most of them. The selection criteria we followed here is, uh, first of all, the tools that we're gonna talk about had to support OpenAPI 3.0 or 3.1, either as JSON or YAML, um, tools that, were, that are still stuck to Swagger 2.0, uh, I didn't consider them. Free, they have to be free open source software, actively maintained, 
as in, you know, at least had a, a comet in the last months. Um, some projects sadly have been abandoned. That happens with open source. There's always the risk that you start using an open source tool and then um, it doesn't get updates or, uh, you know, um, doesn't get any, any change. And that's also the reason why many tools, very, you know, even very good tools out there are, are still stuck uh, at uh, Swagger 2.0, the old version uh, of the specification standard. And most of them were extracted from a directory, which I strongly recommend, which is uh, openapi.tools. Uh, that is um, a community directory for the APIs you want hate um, community. Uh, they, they also have a Slack channel, um, pretty nice people. I'm also there, um, um, you know, um, as, as a technical writer and documentarian. And the nice thing about this directory is that it just, it, it not only lists documentation tools, um, you also get many other tools that can do things with open API files, such as testing, um, building code samples, etc. cetera. Um, our last criteria is that we were looking, I, were, I was looking for tools that were not overly uh, technical or overly specific to, you know, to some domains or, or certain tasks, like, um, like some modules maybe that you have to plug into existing React projects or, or uh, things like that. In most cases, um, these tools can be run like in a matter of minutes. You simply copy a repository, uh, you run a couple of scripts and you're good to go. The findings, so I've been searching, um, I've been looking for these tools and, and I have some findings to share. The first one is that, you know, roughly 10 years after, after Swagger's uh, initial launch, OpenAPI's initial launch, um, the situation looks very good. There's um, not, not big, like a small, medium amount of tools out there, um, but they are very mature, some of them very robust group of tools and you can do a lot with them already. So I would say the ecosystem is pretty healthy. Um, second good news is that OpenAPI 3.0, which is vastly superior to Swagger 2.0, finally achieved like lots of adoption and is, is very strong across the board. Um, though I added a note there to watch out for ASIC API, which is also very promising as a, as a specification standard. Most tools that I found can be used either uh, as a standalone uh, uh, JavaScript that you can embed in HTML pages or as a framework component. And um, most of them are also a bit opinionated about how the information on the REST API should be shown. Uh, so when I say opinionated is they either, you know, uh, there's this big Stripe docs complex going on in that everyone knows about Stripe docs. Everyone wants to be the new Stripe docs. And you know you see these three column layout pretty much everywhere. That's nice. It's good. I think everyone is familiar with it. But um, it means that you know if you want to disrupt um, the API documentation space, there's still like plenty of room for uh, for innovation, right? So we are in this situation where uh, there are several players doing their own thing, and many are following. Um, but the ecosystem is, is quite robust. So what is the flow typically with these tools is, is it really boils down to this. First, you edit the open API specifications. You may have a workflow in place or you're using maybe some, some design tools or maybe you have these specs in a Git repository. Then you lint or validate the specs to check that there are no errors in them. This is very important because these documentation tools rely on valid open API files. If the files are broken, uh, they, they, in most cases, the documentation tools will not be able to render the docs. So you have to make sure that the specs are valid against uh, the open API standard. Um, there are also a bunch of free tools, by the way, that you can use for linting or validating specs. Uh, if you go to openapi.tools, um, there's like a dozen of them. The third step, of course, is to generate the docs. Um, and here there are two, two ways, really. One is some, some tools generate the documentation in real time uh, using JavaScript. And some other tools generate just static HTML that you can then uh, reuse anywhere. Finally, you choose how to deploy the docs. These tools do not do this for you. 
you have to um, build a pipeline, a workflow where uh, the resulting files are deployed somewhere. So you may need the help of some DevOps person or someone who help you, um, you know, deploy things uh, out there. And then you enjoy the docs, of course. So before we go forward, um, I didn't say this at the beginning, but feel free to interrupt at any time, raise your hand or just, you know, um, enable your microphone and ask a question. Um, I like these, you know, these presentations to be interactive as much as possible. So if you have any question at any point, just feel free to, uh, to ask. So what are the tools that we selected um, for, for this? So in no particular order, we start with Swagger UI, which is the classic. Then we'll review also, we also have Wither Shins, we have Redoc, uh, Elements from Stoplight, Rapidoc, OpenAPI Explorer, and then we have a new contender, <laughs> a very fresh one, which is the Agent uh, API Explorer, uh, which will be open source uh, in the next few days. And uh, Andrea maybe will- Maybe not yeah. that, maybe not that soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe not that soon, but uh, very soon. Uh, and Andrea will, will also, Tell us a bit more about it uh, towards the end of this presentation. So let's start with Swagger UI. Um, Swagger UI. So let's let's get out of the presentation and get to the demo space here. Here I'm loading the uh, the GitHub REST API specs, which are massive. So you can see that Swagger is parsing the file and rendering the documentation using JavaScript in real time, and it takes a bit because it's a massive spec. So Swagger UI is a classic. Um, as you can see, it has uh, the uh, one column layout you, you are all used to. Um, you get the verb of the, uh, of the HTTP call as a, as a button with colors. There's a color code, which you can customize um, by just editing the uh, SCSS files in the repo. And then we build the styles. Then, Every operation has its own box where you get the description. Um, of course, the markdown that you use within the descriptions gets rendered correctly. And then a nice thing about Swagger UI, uh, which developers uh, often appreciate, is that you can uh, fill out the parameters and you can try out the operation, provided that your OpenAPI file have, um, has the server information to connect to, say, you know, an authentication information to connect to a live stack and, and test out the operation. And then there's the, the responses section. So it's, I think the, most developers are very familiar with this. Uh, I've been seeing API docs using Smarter UI for 10 years now, and it's, it's a very familiar you can feel. And let's, let's jump a bit now to, to the analysis. So the pros of Swagger UI, first of all, is you know this comes from from SmartBear, um, and they have been like instrumental in 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 building and uh, popularizing OpenAPI as a specification standard. So they they know their stuff, and the the support for OpenAPI is outstanding. Um, I think support for OpenAPI three one zero is probably gonna come in the near future if it's not there already. Is there anyone from from SmartBear among the audience, maybe who can tell us if 3.1.0 is already compatible? Not sure. Well, anyway, another pro is that is the interaction. So interaction, as you remember uh, from a previous slide, is, is one of the things that developer uh, uh, consulting API docs look for you know, the most. And Swagger UI lets you really run your own calls with no hassle uh, at all. The look and feel is like you know very familiar, time tested, and you can deploy Swagger UI very easily as a standalone thing or as a React component within a bigger web project. And it's very mature. Now the cons is that you know on one hand it's is very time tested, but um, the design really hasn't changed in years, so um, it feels a bit old, um, a bit stale, especially when you compare it to the new fancy to three paint designs that are out there. Um, and you can also tell from, from the UX, like some people love it, but in my case, you know, if you want to browse all the documentation and every method is collapsed, so you need lots of click to get to things. 
So um, this is one of the things you have you must consider when when picking a solution for API docs is um, how fast can the developer get to the information they need? And in the case of Swagger UI, we really need to click a lot to, to get things. Um, uh, though on the other hand, it's, uh, it's all very compact, right? You get it on, on just one column. Customization is, is a bit difficult. Um, say that if you want to tweak the colors even, you have to rebuild the, the Swagger distribution for yourself. Um, it's not the end of the world. It just requires a bit of experience with SCSS, but um, it's not as easy, say, as overriding a few CSS styles. And then the, the embedded documentation, this is something that is a bit lacking in Swagger UI, is that you, you can't add, like, say, markdown guides to, to the docs. It's just the API reference documentation loaded from, from OpenAPI files. Next is Redoc. Um, which has also a, a paid version, which we talk about it in uh, later. And let, let's try it out. Redoc, I would say, is, is perhaps the hottest right now open source solution for API docs. It's very popular. Um, let's say how, you know, how long it takes to load up the, uh, the GitHub open API specifications from the hard disk. It's taking a bit. In terms of performance, perhaps is you know, performance is not the forte of Redux sometimes, um, but then you'll see that is worth it. <laughs> Come on, Redux, you can do it. So to be honest, I pick like a very massive. It's not as big as Stripe API specification file, which I think is some like I don't know, several thousand, maybe a million lines. I don't know. It's it's massive. It takes a long, uh, long, long time to load. So here it is. Um, as you can see, we have the three pane design, which everyone is familiar with. We have the search. So if you type, say, actions, you should, oh my God, the JavaScript is suffering a bit, but you should only get the, uh, the thing you're looking for. There you go. And you can expand all the, all the tags that are on the left to see all the methods. Again, there's color coding. Uh, you get a summary. So there, there's a navigation. You, you already see a difference here compared to Swagger UI is that you have the navigation on a left sidebar that you can customize a bit. Then in the middle pane, you get the, the description of the method with the responses. And then you get the, um, the response samples here on the right side uh, in JSON format or um, if you use um, the X examples, I think it's called example docs um, property, which is a vendor extension, you can also add code samples to the docs. Um, you're probably also very familiar with Redoc. Lots of uh, companies and teams out there use it. So let's see, let's do the analysis now a bit. So the thing with Redoc is, again, is I think is, is a well-designed UI. The support for OpenAPI is excellent. It even has support for things like discriminators so that it creates a, a drop-down menu where you can select the, the value of the discriminator and it updates the examples in real time. That is fantastic. There's integrated search. And uh, if you want to generate zero dependency files, you can use Redux CLI, which is a tool that generates like an HTML with everything packaged into it. So it's like a single file you can distribute. Um, it uses vendor extensions for configuration. And I think it's one of the most customizable solutions out there. Like you can customize pretty much everything in Redux, uh, including styling. And again, you can use it as a standalone solution or as a React component. Now to the cons, um, one of the biggest concepts seen for something so stable and mature as Redux is it doesn't still generate code samples. You have to provide them using better extensions. Um, I think these has pros and cons, like uh, by adding them manually, you're ensure that they are high quality, um, but it takes time. So, and there are other solutions out there that generate code samples. The three pane design is very nice, but on the other hand, it really depends on how you implement it. Um, this is more an aesthetic personal opinion, but I found that it has lots of empty space. Uh, on the right side, and, and that is perhaps not the best use of space at times. And 
the way Redux also renders the schema is very special to Redux. Uh, personally, I love it, but there might be people out there that prefer to see the schema in some other ways. And, and that really boils down maybe a bit to the engineering culture that you have at the company. Again, there is no support for embedded guides in the open source version. Uh, there is in the paid uh, software as a service version though. So with the open source version, you cannot add uh, markdown guides to the docs. And the performance as you've seen, well, to be fair, I've loaded these in an old uh, MacBook Air from, from, uh, from my hard drive using a very simple web server. But um, I've done tests with other APIs out there and it takes a bit sometimes to load the schema. So um, I would say if, you, if you're gonna use Redoc, make sure that maybe you split a big schema into sub schemas um, because performance can be really an issue sometimes. Um, you also have the option, of course, of building a bundle, which is better in terms of performance. Then we have a new one, um, not very known, which is called Rapid Doc. Um, this project is, is growing a lot. There's a lot of activity on GitHub. Let's see the demo very quickly. Okay, so let me just go back. Okay, so this is gonna take a bit to load. So wait a second. Again, this is rendering, again, um, all the documentation in real time using JavaScript. So it takes a bit to load and the web server I'm using is not the most performant. It's just a, an HTTP daemon that is loading uh, stuff in real time. Come on, Rapid Doc, you can do it. Essentially, uh, how all these solutions work is that you have, let's have a look at the code, by the way. Oh, JavaScript is a bit stuck. Shall I wait? Shall I just, let's just get out of this page <laughs> and load it from here. This is the official page of the project. So let's see an example. By the way, the one thing that I love about the Rapid Doc uh, webpage is that they have lots of different examples. Like you, you get a basic demo. And here is what I was trying to explain before is that the way you embed most of these solutions is you have a simple HTML file, um, but it can even be a markdown page within your static site generator. And what you do is you, in the head of the document, you inject a script that, that loads the API docs. And then you add a special tag or a special instruction later in the body to render uh, the specification, whatever, whatever it is. Um, let's have a look at the dark theme demo here. This is much, much faster loaded from the web server. This is the one column layout, I believe. And you can see here is, it's different. It's different from Swagger UI, it's different from Redoc. It has a filter for operations. And, and then you get the uh, a design which resembles a bit Swagger UI. It's, it's a bit fresher, right? So um, you get here request and response at the same level. The information architecture, the design here is a little different. Um, you can see it's also interactive. Um, let's have a look at, I believe there's um, a three panel demo also somewhere. Let's have a look at it. Now this is also one column, um, but there must be, there's, there's one with two columns here. Uh, let me see, which is the one that was trying to load from, um, from the hard drive. Well, anyway, you can see here also, uh, we were talking about the, the way that the schema is rendered. Here you get the, the navigation sidebar. And um, Rapidoc interestingly has two ways of rendering the schema. One is as, as a tree, and this is very um, quite fresh, I would say, again. Um, you get like the, the hierarchy of the properties in, in very complex schemas, which for chunky APIs is great. But you can also go with, with, the, JSON way, uh, with the JSON view here. So it's, it's just maybe more developer friendly. Um, but it's, it's really elegant, just, you know, just the way uh, Rapidoc renders all this. 
let's have a look again at the uh, at my my impressions of testing RapidDoc here. You can see a screenshot with uh, with the full two columns layout. So the design is indeed fresh. It's um, it's quite simple to theme, and and the website has lots of examples uh, for things like changing colors or the logo. It has two schema styles uh, that gives you like additional flexibility, um, and it's like very easy to embed. It has a search, and you can even inject some HTML to do things like adding um, like a disclaimer or a maintenance warning, um, things like that. You can't use it to inject docs, but you can inject like very simple HTML here and there if you need to. Uh, it's interactive, like uh, Swagger UI, and it comes with, again, standalone and React component versions. Some cons is, again, there are no, uh, no code examples. Um, for some people, I added here, this may have pro because the, the API reference tend to be like, um, you know, smaller and leaner. Um, but again, support for complex guides, it's, it's not there. So RapidDoc is, is very good for API reference, but um, you can't add guides yet. And the customization options, while they're easy to use, are restricted mostly to colors and the logo. Okay, but that's true also for, for most of the options we reviewed. There's a bonus. The bonus is Rapid PDF. So I know some people have been asking for a way of rendering, uh, generating, PDF from open API specifications. And, and these guys have created a uh, Rapid PDF, which is uh, a web component to just do that. So you may work in a sector where people appreciate printing stuff uh, or just using PDF, which is safer for the trees. And Rapid PDF allow you to do that. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, let me just have a look at chat here. Oh, Joe is asking a question about reader performance. Um, yeah, whether we read a performance panel on browser performance, probably, probably. I would say that if, if the JavaScript engine is fast and is running on a fast uh, rig, um, chances are that read up will also load faster. Uh, there might also be some other factors like the CDN, that um, CDN performance or where you're connecting from. So performance, again, you know, take that as, you know, with, with a grain of salt when I talk about performance. Um, I'm just sharing what my experience has been from, uh, you know, connecting from Spain. So now do we have a very exciting, very fresh new option here, which is Elements. Um, I don't know if Phil Sturgeon is online. Phil, are you there? I don't know. I invited him to the to the meetup. Phil is, is one of the authors, the makers of Elements. And uh, Elements come from Stoplight. You may know Stoplight from, um, from, the, uh, from the Stoplight Studio, which is a collaborative suite for designing and, and mocking uh, APIs. But now they are improving a lot their, their documentation side and they're sharing their documentation engine as open source code. So let's have a look at, um, at elements and you will see it's definitely different and some of it will look like very familiar to you. So let's load up the, uh, the local server here. Again, I've just embedded the, uh, the, the JavaScript package and loaded uh, a local specification. There you go. So you see that it's loading pretty fast and the design is very reminiscent, I would say, of Stripe. There's, there's a clear Stripe look and feel, you know, thingy going on here. Um, and you see it as like, you know, uh, with, with a white background, it, it, it is as if, you know, you don't even feel the three columns. It feels like you have a sidebar, you have a page with all the content, and then you get thing like uh, the interactive, um, the interactive box here on the on the right, you get the you get code samples in lots of languages, and this is this is so good, you know, this is just so good to have. The only need to you have to you know you just have to provide the open API file, and an elements takes care of generating all this in in a request sample box. This is great, and then you get a response on the right side. Um, you see that. 
Markdown is, is rendering in the descriptions. And then you have the, uh, the schema dragged down here with the, um, with the design that I would say is, is, is pretty classic. Um, it's a bit less aggressive on the eyes maybe than Redux. Um, so I really like the design of, of elements and it's a breeze to use. Um, let's have a look at the schemas also. These are the schema sections. There you go. So you get, uh, this is a very simple schema actually. Let's see if we have something more complicated. Yeah, essentially it's the same view you would get in, in for the responses or the request schemas in, in, the, in the operations. So let's talk a bit about the elements. Um, my feelings of it. So the, the biggest pro is, you know, you get that immediately is the auto-generated code samples. Um, and that's fantastic. Like it's, it's no hassle at all. And you don't even have to provide examples on your own. Um, it's just use stuff that is out there to generate them from the specs. They may not be, uh, you know, auto-generated code samples may not be the best code samples, but I think can get people started very easily. Um, the two layouts, you know, uh, available, it, you, you have seen the three pane one, there's also stacked layout. They're very similar to Stripe API docs. So, you know, um, following Stripe API docs is, is all right, but um, personally, I, I don't like it when, when uh, people copy other designs. But if you are working at a startup and you have, say the PM coming to you and saying, I need something that looks like a straight API docs. You go with elements and you have a quick win there. Um, you can do live requests from the docs. So it's documentation is interactive. That, that box you can check. You can use it as a React component. So that means again, that if you have front-end developers building a dev portal um, and helping you with that, uh, you can use elements to show the API reference within the developer portal is the new, one of the newest projects in, in the API docs arena. And it's very actively developed and used by Stoplight. It's very promising. The cones, of course, are related to its age. So it's compared to say Redux or Swagger UI is still a bit rough around the edges. Um, uh, support for discriminators is an example. Discriminators is, is actually something that I think will be dropped in future open API uh, specification versions. but. If, if you use them, for instance, uh, you, you may want a documentation to render it, them correctly. Um, but I think that will come eventually. Uh, the look and feel customization sector is still a bit lacking, but again, I think that's just a matter of the project growing. And for more features, and uh, you know, this happens with, with some of these projects is that you get maybe 70% of the features, <coughs> sorry, with the, um, with the open source version, but if you want more, you have to jump to, uh, to the stoplight documentation um, software as a service. Let me see, we have some chats here. Um, does elements have search? Let me have a look here. You can also see, yeah, single column, that is true. Let me have a look because um, I'm not exactly sure it, it does, <coughs> or maybe is a feature of, of stoplight documentation. Hang on a bit. I'm gonna actually take a minute to uh, have a sip of water. <laughs> so this is the um, stoplight documentation, it's the paid version, right? So you can get started for free. And yes, the uh, software as a service version, <coughs> sorry, does feature search. So let's have a look here. Maybe we can we can peek. Code samples and the search is must be somewhere. There you go. Yeah, so it does have search, but I think is within the context of this top like account. So you probably need um, you need to pay for it. The free version you can actually test it. Um, well, not not this one. Wait a second. Stop white. Elements. <clears throat> yeah, here it is, free forever. Um, 
No, it does not have a search, but on the other hand, it's um, everything is on one page. So you just control F your way to, to find stuff. So um, some people like to have like the real time filter as in Redoc, but I think you might not need it with, with uh, doc solutions such as elements because you just, you just control F. But um, this is actually a feature, like if you go to, uh, to the GitHub project, um, it's pretty active right now. Uh, you can just go to, to issues. Maybe this, they have something for the search already, but you know, it's, it's very, very active. So I would suggest that if you want to try it out and maybe suggest to add search is as easy as, as raising an issue here and you know, uh, you know, make the point for it. So very promising, still a bit rough around the edges, but uh, definitely worth trying, uh, especially if you're a bit tired of Redux and Swagger UI. Then we have Wither Shins. So Wither Shins is a bit different in that um, it's not a JavaScript package. It does not render uh, documentation online. And uh, what it does instead is uh, it, it takes an open API file and it generates Markdown that then you can use in uh, in, in this using the uh, this late static site generator to to build the docs. So it's it's like an intermediate step. So let's see a bit how it works. This is an HTML I created uh, from an open API file. And as for the design, you can see here there is uh, there is a search. We have the three pane design. Um, I think you can also, since it's markdown, you can have guides in there. Like you, you can add their own, your own guides to the API reference documentation for things like authentication. And then you can also get the code samples in several languages, which is pretty cool. And the design is, is quite simple, um, quite light, but the way it works is that um, Essentially, you have to run a command from, from the command line. So you need a bit of a bit of skills with that. This is the official page of the project. And I think it's already supporting OpenAPI 3.1, if not mistaken. I don't know if Mike is on the call. Uh, Mike Ralston is, is the main maintainer of Wittershins, which recently reached version 4.0, by the way. And see here, you have a simple command. You would do something like node weird shins, and then you would add the uh, the modifiers for things like okay, I want to disable the search. Then I want to have these uh, language tabs for the code samples, and lastly, there would be the path to the Open API specification and the output of Markdown. And then once you have the Markdown generated uh, using weird shins, you would do some you would use something like reslate which is the static site generator you actually use to build the docs and add like things like the guides, et cetera. So it's a bit different as a concept from, you know, from the other, it departs a bit from, from what the others um, API documentation solutions do, but that is for a good reason and it may fit your use case. So let's have a look at the pros and cons. The pros is that it's docs as code. So um, it generates Markdown and you can use that Markdown in any way you want. Um, in, any static in any static site generators capable of, of rendering that model into HTML. Um, it supports not just OpenAPI, but also API Blueprint, Async API, even Simulasa, which you didn't know about. Um, so lots of compatibility with other uh, REST API and, and API specification standards. Um, it has the usual three pane design, which generally cut samples in all major languages. And it really can be customized in lots of ways. Um, one interesting thing is that Mike tested uh, Wither Shins with more than 3,000 open API specifications. So you can bet that uh, it, it, will, uh, it will make it work with, with your own open API specification file. Now to the cons is that, you know, in terms of styling, uh, the default UIs, maybe you, you may find it a bit too elemental, uh, really depends on your tastes. Uh, but again, you can also customize the CSS. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. Um, the documentation is not interactive because it's, you know, it's just a static Markdown 
uh, that then you turn into HTML. There's no console. And, and there is this dependency, you know, that you need a static site generator, a specific one, which is either Weaslate or Slate. Um, but again, the advantage of Wittershins is that if you want to deploy the documentation uh, as, as first of all, statically, so no, you know, no JavaScript anywhere doing any render in real time, and, and maybe you want to merge it with our docs and really do it in a doc ops or DevOps fashion, um, Wittershins may be your, um, your solution. We have another new player, um, not much known, which is OpenAPI Explorer. Um, in this particular case, we're gonna load up their website. Uh, I don't have like a, a local demo for it just because of the way it works. Um, essentially, OpenAPI Explorer is not available as a standalone. It's more like a web component. You can integrate with React, Vue, and, and other JavaScript frameworks. And let's have a look at the demo. It reminds me a bit of RapiDoc uh, in terms of design. It's like a bit boxy, you know, with the lots of borders and around things. Um, but you get all the, all the usual features. Uh, the documentation is very much interactive, like you get the form where you fill out everything. Um, there's a filter for looking for things. And then you, you get the usual nav bar on the left side and plus requests and body samples. Perhaps not the most exciting design, but I think OpenAPI Explorer is also quite active uh, as an open source project. And it fits again, a very specific purpose of like having a web component that you can customize to render API docs. So um, it's also the, quite difficult to set up. Like you have to be a web developer. Uh, let's have a look at the pros and cons in this sense. So there is this big focus on interactive documentation. This is part of the philosophy of the project. Like um, fields are pre-populated by using examples. Uh, you can use lots of vendor extensions to set up everything for interactivity. Um, you can use it with pretty much every JavaScript framework. It's already compatible with OpenAPI 3.1, which is great. And it's also pretty fast. The cons is that, first of all, it's very technical. There is no standalone CLI version, so you need developers to get started. And the project is so new, you know, it's, it's difficult to find documentation. That is quite common with, uh, with open source projects, especially the, the newest ones. Um, the good thing though, is that if you are looking for, you know, to contribute to the open source docs arena, this may be one of the projects where you could go and like, you know, uh, even support them with documentation. And now we have a new one. Um, I didn't have much time to analyze this one, but Andreas Solossi, if he's from Agen, Agen is, um, is a quite big now fintech payment company from the Netherlands. And uh, they have a very cool API Explorer. Uh, let's have a look at it. Where they're documenting their own API. And you know, I was I was also working in, in the finance and the fintech space. And, and they were like an example also for us. Uh, here you can see you get um, all the methods, uh, all the endpoints on the navigation left side. Then you have uh, versioning, which is super interesting. Maybe Andrea, you can tell us how this works. I, I would also like to know how they choose the numbers for the versions because uh, <laughs> they started what, like oh, 30, AP 32? <laughs> API versioning is, is, is quite a topic in itself and we could like spend three hours talking about it, but let's, let's maybe skim a bit about this. But how, how does this work on there? Like you select the version and it loads like a previous uh, open API file or how does it work? Uh, yeah, it, it loads. So the API Explorer uh, takes uh, the different specs for each version, uh, and then each spec is loaded when you choose from the dropdown. Oh, that's great, that's great. Uh, it's, so, it's, so you need yeah. to have separate specs for each. Okay, okay. And you define those like in a YAML file or? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, our ones are JSON. Uh, yeah. I am not 100% sure if uh, the new and improved version uh, will have support for YAML. Okay. Uh, but we're using JSON. Okay, the that's, that's pretty cool. I think this is one of the few, uh, maybe the only really uh, open source API doc solutions that I've seen that supports versioning of the, uh, of the API. 
like uh, navigating different versions. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's very specific. Maybe you, you have different versioning policies for your API, but having this option is, is very cool. Um, you can see here, you have the request and, and response parameters also uh, rendered quite nicely. You can expand them as you would do in Redoc. And, um, and you, you, are, you have like these three structure also for them, which is pretty nice. And then on the right side, uh, you get, what is this? Is the response demo or? Uh, yeah, so a more interesting example would be the payments request. Mm -hmm. So on the left hand now, the, the second post payments uh, because uh, higher up. This one. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because that one actually has several examples. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And these are like, um, these are vendor extensions in the open API file or just using the example Feel, I it's, guess it's using the examples. Okay, it's using the example. This is very cool. So you can create uh, examples for different use cases and yeah. run them even. So that's that's pretty cool. Fingers crossed. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So and um, this is so the, you're going to open source this. This is very exciting news. Um, what, uh, what's the plan, more or less? So the plan is. Uh, to completely rewrite this. So you might have noticed that the screenshot is very different. Uh, so the design is slightly tweaked, but the biggest changes are under the hood actually, because uh, the uh, the app itself, uh, yeah. it was uh, like cobbled together internally because right. uh, yeah. a, a few years ago when um, uh, Adrian set this up, uh, the options available at the time weren't really offering all the functionalities. So like the um, mm -hmm. comprehensive nesting, for example, the versioning, the, uh, you know, running the code samples, there wasn't a single solution to yeah. do all these things that yeah. we wanted. So then we're like, oh yeah, we're going to do it on our own. Right. So right. It, it, it was quite, it became quite, quite unwieldy. Right. Uh, and <laughs> uh, that's why uh, the team has rewritten it from scratch in a sort of like modular extendable way oh, suitable excellent. for open source. Mm -hmm. um, so they've written it uh, using Vue and SCSS and a little bit of type, TypeScript mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of love. <laughs> excellent. I can I can promise that. Um, well, I'm, I'm so glad, Andrea, that uh, the agent is, is contributed to the community with this. I think, um, you know, many companies in the end end up uh, creating their own solutions if they have the, you know, if they're lucky enough to have the resources to this and, and following a bit like the Stripe way, right? And what, what people usually don't see though is all the sweat and all the effort behind this, these code solutions. It's not trivial to build something that renders properly open API uh, specifications. Um, of course, the, the risk is that if you follow a solution that has been open sourced from an existing uh, commercial website or commercial documentation is that, again, it's, it may be maybe too opinionated on the way you display things, but say that you are a fintech company or even a payment company, and, and there are lots of electronic payment companies out there, uh, you may really want to have a look at the ADN API Explorer uh, once it goes open source. Let me just follow with the questions here. Hey, Mike is, uh, yeah, 3.1 three support for uh, Widershins coming July. That is fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, perfect. So Andrea just replied to, to Joe Mellon. Um, so, so, you know, the, the space, as you can see, is moving like quite fast. Um, when, when Andrea knew about this presentation, she, she told me about the Asian XVI Explorer going open source. So, and um, I, I think we are also all waiting for the Stripe docs to go open source, maybe one day um, that, that will happen, you know? So after this review, um, that leaves us with a question. And the question is, okay, so what's, what's the best one? What's the best docs generator? And the, the best answer I came up with is um, none or it depends. It depends on what, like um, say that you're looking for something to embed as a framework component, then Open API, Open API Explorer is perhaps the, the most interesting because it's really like it, it has been built for that from the very beginning. And um, it, it, all this documentation is, is tailored to that, all the settings are tailored to that. Um, what if you want to do doc ops, you know, build doc ops pipelines and, you know, work with developers to create docs and, and deploy them anywhere? Then Widow Shins, I think, is, uh, is, is the best solution. Um, as an example of that flexibility of Widow Shins, um, so Paligo, you may know about Paligo. Paligo is a, a CCMS a component content management system um, 
that is able to produce uh, REST API reference documentation. And um, I remember when, when I opened this ticket saying, look, if you use Weather Shins and you pipe the output, you convert it to HTML, like, you know, you can get this three pane design uh, just by feeding a REST open API file. And as, you know, as far as I know, they did that. They, they, uh, they took inspiration from Weather Shins and they build their own features, um, you know, using pretty much the same, the same uh, uh, procedure, the same workflow that we should follow. So Wither Shins can be extremely powerful. What you're looking for is generating static docs from open API files. Um, what about open API compatibility, stability? Well, if you, you know, if you want to, to work with something that you know is gonna uh, be stable and able to take any hit and you want something easy to customize, well, Redoc and Swagger UI, I think, are very good options. And what about the most promising, the best looking? Well, certainly I would say Elements, Rapid Doc, and, and the Agent API Explorer are all in, in that space, but are a bit, um, are a bit bleeding edge. So it's, it's the trade-off is that um, if you want to use Elements or you want to use the Agent API Explorer, you may, uh, you may not have access to some of the features that Redoc or say Swagger UI have. So it really depends on, on what you value the most. So there is no perfect solution. Um, having said that, there's also the known free tool. So we had to talk about them, especially because some of the open source solutions we have seen are based, uh, well, are the basis of the paid solutions. So Palio is one, and I think it, uh, it builds these three pane, uh, three pane documentation uh, layout um, using reader schemes or something very similar. There's Redmi, there's Stoplight, which uses elements and has a bunch of additional features. There's also the Postman docs, though so they're perhaps the, the worst of the bunch, really. They're very basic. Um, if you are doing also collaborative API design, it may make sense to pay for some of these solutions. Like Swagger Hub, for instance, is great for API design, collaborative API design, and it has uh, Swagger UI as, a, as an integrated docs generator. And there's also Redocly, which hosts Redoc documentation. Um, so, you know, if I would say one way of approaching this is, let me start with the open source solution. Let me try that out. If I need, you know, more stability, support, and, and more features, you might do the jump to the service as a software uh, alternative, which is really great for more teams, especially, you know, if you don't have developers like Adrian say that, uh, that they can build an API explorer for you, then um, starting with the with a proof of concept using the open source tools and then taking the step to, to the commercial alternatives to the commercial um, grade version, I think is it makes lots of sense. Um, be aware though that some of the options here, which are known free, uh, are not always top notch in terms of quality, especially this is again, is my personal opinion is that Postman documentation really would need uh, a big overhaul is, is a bit of an afterthought currently. Um, um, the others are, are okay, but they, know, they might not have some of the features you want. And always, you know, beware of, of vendor lock-in. Some of the players, most of the players here are pretty cool with that and, and they let you export the data and download the data. But um, always be like very mindful that when you step into the software as a service work, um, you, you want to have like a door to, to get out of it in case of emergency. So try the open source versions first, like get a, get a feeling of how they work. And you know, if, if you demo API docs using open source solutions, uh, you may even get uh, developer resources to, to really develop a developer portal, to do a great developer portal. Um, and that, that's the nice thing about open source is really that for zero cost, you can start and prototype API docs and, and, uh, and maybe convince the management about the validity of the, of the approach. Uh, let's see if there are more questions. Okay, so there's, there's a conversation going on about the uh, Agent API Explorer. So now we are done. We are done with this uh, very quick overview of, uh, of API Explorer, um, sorry, API documentation docs um, and the tools that allow it. Um, I would now like to take any question or have a chat with you about this, if you have any question or anything.
feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, I just wanted to clarify that I understand what you mean by your question. Uh, is, is it that you want to be able to choose whether to use the path or the summary in the left hand nav? I, see you're I think you're just, muted. Uh, yeah. Um, I ran into a problem with Redox CLI in which um, I could kind of Tool around with the layout, but I couldn't. It's difficult in a lot of these tools, even if you can customize them, to be able to choose yeah. what data you display in what place. So choosing to display the summary uh, or the title instead of the path, or um, choosing the you know uh, choosing where to display a particular part of the OAS three, and this. Um, maybe it's demanding an awful lot because I'm used to, you know, uh, using templating languages and patterning languages like Hugo templating, where you get a lot of choice as to where you want particular, um, data and metadata to appear yeah. within the document. Yeah. I would like, you know, I would, I would love to maybe, well, first Andrea, you might want to, to answer this about the, the agent yeah. explorer. First of all, uh, <laughs> I don't know is my like <laughs> quick out of this, uh, if this is going to be a feature or not. Um, the okay. devs are actually like working on it right now to sort of like uh, have the summaries in the left-hand nav. I don't know how like highly customizable this would be, but this is a very good input and something definitely to discuss. Thanks. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for your, for your uh, thank availability. You very much. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. And I totally agree with Joe that, that these tools, again, are like very, very opinionated, you know, about the information architecture. So I would like more tools to follow Widow Shin's approach in the sense of, um, you know, parsing uh, an open API files and then using a templating language or something. You know, thank you. There you go, Mike. I think, you know, <laughs> you, you got it right. And yeah. uh, because then you can really rearrange information how you want, you know? Um, yeah, that's the thing. Mike, how, how do you see? Well, thank you for being there. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you for the presentation. It, I, it really helped me update my knowledge of, of the other tools that are out there and and what the uh, yeah what everybody else is doing. So it was, that was really good. Thank you. Excellent. So, what, what do you think about you know the um, rendering documentation in real time versus Wittershins approach? Like, do you think they all fit some use cases or? Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's. Um, there's lots of cases where you want um, dynamic documentation, especially if you want a console to be able to um, do interactive testing, um, mm -hmm. give that uh, to your documentation users. Um, that said, there are, there's a place, like you say, for the doc ops and kind of dev yeah. focused. And Wittershins is definitely a, a dev focused tool. It, it was built uh, for a, um, a client supply consultancy. Uh, rather than as a, a tool to have a, a platform based on top of it. Um, so yes, it does take a, a, a different sort of approach and, and needs a, a bit of dev handholding to get the best out of it, but it is very flexible in some ways as well. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely something you have to factor in when, when choosing a solution. Then. Um, in any case, Mike, on, on behalf of the Bread the Docs community, let me uh, send you a big thanks. Like. We, we seldom get a chance of thanking uh, open source creators and maintainers. And, you know, without you, uh, we probably would have a hard time just uh, creating API docs. We'd probably still stack to board or something. <laughs> well, without the, the community like this, um, there wouldn't be a use for the tool. So it's, um, it's great to have um, some feedback and uh, more feedback. Um, I, I'll take anything on board and I'm very happy to look at people's use cases. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. And, um, uh, by the way, I strongly recommend that if you are interested in API design and, and all things REST API, there's the APIs you won't hate communities lack. Um, I think Joe is also a member and other people in, in Write the Docs. And I think it, it's like a great sister community for any technical writer who dabbles into API docs. So um, just queuing the, the recommendation there. Any more questions, comments, anything you would like to, um, to add?
no, I think we're probably good to go then. Um, thank you everyone for joining, really. It's been uh, a pleasure. And um, I'll, uh, I think this will be uploaded eventually to the, I think to the Brighter Docs Meetups channel or something, but I will make it available online and, and announce the, post the URL somewhere in the Brighter Docs Slack. So thank you for being here and uh, see you at the next meetup. Cheers. <laughs>